Hello, my name is Lucas Isbidivlid, and I'm here to give a final ranking, based on my own memory, <laughs> of some of these novels that I, uh, of Kurt Vonnegut's, most of which I read at the beginning of the year, uh, and then the last six I read in the past uh, two and a half, three weeks, something like that. Uh, well, over the past month at least, I don't remember when I started. Uh, anyway. Uh, I would like to start. Some of them I don't remember terribly well. Uh, a few of them I do remember because I've read a couple times, or I read them quite recently. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been uh, largely, early on especially, a painful experience reading his work. This guy, his, his writing style does not mesh with me very well. Uh, but five of the last six books I think are fine to good and um, so it, it wasn't a total lost cause uh, overall I would say six out of fourteen books were perfectly fine <laughs> but um, then the other eight are middling for different reasons um, or, or outright atrociously bad. And if we look here, um, to look at our ranking system, you can maybe hear my girlfriend singing in the background. Nothing to be done about that. But um, she's preparing dinner. Uh, anyway, at the top, we've got uh, the best of the best books, um, which is labeled Everything Was Beautiful and Nothing Hurt for his best books. This ranking, by the way, will be uh, not uh, in comparison to the whole plethora uh, of literature, or even focusing in on American literature or science fiction. Uh, it will just be relative to uh, all of his own work uh, in terms of his novels. Um, so if, if we were to go by uh, my genuine feeling of uh, where does it rank somewhere is one of the best books I've ever read or some of the worst books I've ever read certainly some of Vonnegut's books would be some of the worst I have ever read in my life but uh, I don't think any of them are the worst maybe Mother Night <laughs> I, I really hate that book uh, Slapstick is also down there but these are uh, just like he did in Palm Sunday where he ranked his own books uh, compared to th the quality of the other books of his own at that time. Uh, there's a couple that aren't on the list in Palm Sunday because they hadn't been written yet. Uh, I believe Palm Sunday was published in 1980 and he had um, five books come out after that, something like that. Anyway. Uh, these are not quite in order of publication, but we will uh, do our best to remember uh, what happens. Our ranking there, uh, as I was trying to say, everything beautiful, everything was beautiful and nothing hurt for his best novels. Um, of all the words of Mice and Men, the saddest star it might have been. I can't remember where this one is from. I know it's kind of adding to another, like a poem from like Robert Burns or something, but, uh, or maybe it's from Robert Burns and directly, and he just put it in as a sentence, but I think maybe it's from a poem anyway. Um, these are for the books that were pretty good, um, but not quite uh, some of his best work. Uh, and then so it goes, I figured that's kind of, uh, that's going to be in the middle. Um, although it's said after somebody dies or there's a death or something tragic, um, it's kind of like a, you know, it happens, let's move on kind of statement to me. Um, I guess there's so much more meaning to it depending on what you want to put into it. But um, the w as we start to get down to the worst tier, uh, or, uh, the bad tiers, um, I tell you we are here on earth to fart around, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that is a quote from um, A Man Without a Country, I believe. Uh, and then uh, Hocus Pocus excrement hit the 
air conditioner big time. It's not capitalized in the novel from what I recall. But uh, this is for the worst of the worst. <laughs> uh, so let's compare Vonnegut's books to Vonnegut's books and see how they rank in my point of view. Uh, this first one, we can't see the title, I shouldn't have made these squares, but this first one is, I believe, Bluebeard, uh, which is an interesting one. It comes a little bit later. It's written as an autobiography of this guy. Uh, he's an Armenian-American um, Rabo. I just talked about this book the other day, <laughs> Rabo something or other, Rabo. Uh, he's... Uh, living alone in a state that he uh, inherited from his second wife, uh, who was like an owner of the Cincinnati Bengals or something. Um, he was an abstract expressionist artist uh, who studied under uh, a really great um, artist uh, who was not abstract, uh, Dan Gregory, I believe, uh, was the name of the person he studied under. Uh, he never made it to art school uh, because his art lacked meaning and and a message. Um, anyway, there's a great mystery about what's in a certain part of his estate, uh, and there's a lot of um, humor and, and lampooning about the state of uh, high art and the prices that people will pay. Uh, to launder their money, but <laughs> uh, it's got a lot of um, anti-war sentiments to it, and um, you know there's some humor there, um, as always with Vonnegut. I do find that uh, the older he got, the better he got at writing. The better he, w the sharper he was with his criticisms and um, with his use of satire because the earlier the younger he is and the earlier he is in his career when writing I find his satire is completely baseless it doesn't make any sense I'm not entirely sure <laughs> where he's getting these ideas or why they're supposed to be funny but uh, I would say for Bluebeard mm, it's somewhere between so it goes and all of all the words of Mice and Man the saddest or it might have been. I'll say it's somewhere here, uh, in the second tier, because uh, I, I find it a little bit uh, irritating to see so much uh, joking about modern art. Not to say that I'm uh, not a fan, but it's like <laughs> pretty easy to make fun of it, and it just feels kind of tired, uh, even from uh, Kurt Vonnegut, or maybe even especially from Kurt Vonnegut, but um, yeah, I think it's it's not a bad novel, um, not one of my favorites, certainly, but um, it doesn't really offend me or make me angry in any way, and I don't think it's too, you know, I think he does a decent job of uh, poking fun at some things that are pretty absurd, like high art prices, war, and, and this kind of thing, uh, in this novel, so I think it's not too bad. Uh, Breakfast of Champions... Uh, <laughs> I don't remember this novel very well. I remember hating it. Uh, oh, this was the metafictional one, right? Where uh, it's one of his novels that tackles um, free will, which he's always on about, and very big into determinism, which we will see again and again and again and again with his novels. Uh, I remember there's this whole thing about... Uh, the person with the most power, the only person who exerts free will is the reader of the novel. Uh, and there's this kind of conspiracy thing going on in the novel. I don't remember much beyond that. Uh, I thought it was extremely forgettable, uh, except for the fact that it really annoyed me, and I'm not very much a fan of uh, metafictional kind of stuff like this, especially with uh, there's no free will. <laughs> it just, uh, it annoyed me, but it's not one of his worst. <laughs> I tell you, we are here on Earth to fart around. Uh, he thought he was doing something, and I'm here to tell you, no, uh, it wasn't to my taste. Now, I know it's a really big uh, big one for a lot of people. It's uh, one that's very popular with a lot of people. If you like any of these novels that I don't like, more power to you. I'm not here to say you are wrong. I'm here to say I don't like 
his novels. <laughs> Me, not you. I talk for myself. Or do I? Do I have any control over what I say? I don't know. Cat's Cradle. This is the novel I have read the most. Maybe Slaughterhouse-Five I've read just as many times. I've read Cat's Cradle the most. It used to be my favorite. But upon reading it again, uh, I found that the... The trip to San Lorenzo just irritates me. I thought that uh, he did a very good job. I know it's a very early novel for him. Um, the seriousness of Ice Nine uh, and, and uh, Dr. Honecker uh, and his family. Uh, you know, there's some kind of silly weirdness going on with the family, uh, with Newt and, and all that. But I, f I felt that there was a kind of, mm, maybe not maturity exactly, but there was something sharp uh, and pointed uh, and well-developed in his writing about Ice Nine, about this weapon that could destroy the world and this kind of thing. And this, these criticisms came out very strongly. Uh, but then when he's trying to, you know, uh, mo I believe it's San Lorenzo is the name of it. When they go to the island um, and, you know, they have this whole presidential thing and uh, there's a lot of weird, wacky stuff going on. And I just think that it it gets into the side of Kurt Vonnegut I really don't like, and I find it kind of immature and not funny. Uh, by the end, you know, with Bokanon, Bokanonism, I think it's okay the criticisms he's trying to make, but the the whole build up to this um, loses a lot of steam for me. Uh, so. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put it into So It Goes. Although, it has some of my favorite parts of Vonnegut, if I can say that. Um, it just, it becomes so disappointing for the second half. The sa I believe it's San Lorenzo. That part is just so <laughs> disappointing. Although, I don't, I don't mind the Bokanon kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, uh, putting your thumb up your nose or whatever. I can't remember. Uh, it that's fine too but yeah it just doesn't work for me now we get to a book that I do like uh, Dead Eye Dick uh, which has some really interesting concepts uh, not terribly science fiction-y except for one major idea the neutron bomb which has um, sort of greatly impacted our main character uh, who killed someone at a young age um, with a gun um, I believe in the novel he says something like uh, he's a real sharpshooter if he aims at nothing he shoots nothing <laughs> which is kind of a funny uh, cheesy maybe dad joke or something but um, I felt Dead Eye Dick was probably his uh, best novel I guess we'll keep going and as I talk we'll, we're gonna have two others that I think are some of his uh, best work um, yeah Dead Eye Dick I think is definitely some of his most mature it tackles um, prescription drugs and, and gun control and I think to be honest I think it's a pretty good novel <laughs> it's painful to say that as much of a, a hater as I have been uh, but I think everything was beautiful and nothing hurt is where uh, Dead Eye Dick belongs personally um, possibly one of his best uh, another one I'm going to say uh, some good things about is Galapagos, which is this one right here. Uh, oh, I want to say one more thing about Dead Eye Dick. Uh, there's some interesting things going on. There's this whole, like, um, uh, sort of, and these interjections of recipes uh, to sometimes highlight things or make a transition uh, to something else. Um, and some parts of it are written as a, uh, like a play, uh, which has a certain unique dynamic to it, which I think is quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I like that idea. Uh, is it a great novel? Eh, I, I think, I think, yeah, for Vonnegut, yeah. Uh, I think in the grand scheme of things, I'd give it a solid B. <laughs> Uh, just because there are a few things in it that uh, just remind me too much of Vonnegut, uh, even though I know it's a Vonnegut novel. Anyway, let's talk about Galapagos. Uh, another kind of tricky one. I think it's a So It Goes one for sure. 
Um, although it could make the case up here, I think it's definitely here, somewhere behind Cat's Cradle. Um, it's a rare one for Vonnegut because it does kind of have the sense of optimism. Uh, he's very much a cynic, uh, especially in his nonfiction. If you read his nonfiction, my goodness, particularly um, A Man Without a Country, uh, when he's in his old age and he's just fed up with life. Uh, yeah. But uh, Galapagos is interesting because people have evolved into seal creatures. <laughs> Uh, there's been uh, an enormous world economic financial collapse uh, and a few people have, uh, were on a cruise and they're on the Galapagos Islands. Uh, and there's also a, a world health crisis, uh, this disease that leaves uh, the majority of the population infertile, except for the people on the Galapagos Islands. Uh, it's narrated by a ghost, I suppose, Leon Trotsky Trout, um, a million years into the future, so evolution has run its course um, to make some, you know, flippers and, and uh, more snout-like mouths to catch fish and this kind of thing. Um, yeah, the thing about it is, though, that it's just kind of, it kind of feels like it's all over the place with its ideas. It feels a bit sloppy. Uh, I do like it for its optimism, I if you can call it that. <laughs> um, that, that humanity can uh, still survive into the future and become something better, uh, as long as they get a smaller brain, because the big brains are causing us all our problems. Um, yeah, so there's that. That's my idea for that. Um, Hocus Pocus, kind of an interesting one. Mm, this is his 13th novel, and a novel that not a lot of people really like, but I thought it was fine. A little bit messy and sloppy as well, but um, it's about this guy who does all kinds of things, like he's a piano player, he's a... Uh, uh, he works at a university, um, and he's kind of like a doomsayer, and uh, it seemed like he was on, yeah, he was on trial. Uh, he lost his job at the university for some misconduct and became a teacher at a prison. Uh, this novel tackles racism in particular uh, because the prison is completely segregated. America has been re-segregated. Um, uh, and the prison is uh, corporate owned by a Japanese uh, company, uh, which is, you know, a reality and very disturbing. Uh, so, it, you know, it kind of dives into that a little bit as well. Um, I think the kinds of things and the themes that uh, Vonnegut wants to get to um, are poignant in a sense. Uh, again, I think the older he gets, the sharper his writing does become. Uh, it's a little, little sloppy, I guess, but um, I think one thing that kept me from really enjoying it was that um, I read it so, so, uh, I read it so quickly after so many other of his novels. Uh, that it became uh, a bit difficult uh, to appreciate, maybe, as much as I would have, but that's okay. And now I'm starting to think maybe Galapagos belongs above Cat's Cradle. No, we'll leave it there. <laughs> um, Jailbird. This is another novel that I, I quite like, uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and say everything was beautiful and nothing hurt. Uh, still some things in it that mm, I'm not... You know, there's there's always going to be something. It doesn't have to be Vonnegut. I mean, it could be any author. It could be John Steinbeck, who I really enjoy um, as an author. Uh, and I've got issues with him, too. Very sappy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Jailbird uh, is a Watergate novel. Tackles all kinds of issues. Um, uh, Nixon's administration. 
um, Hypocrisy in America, which, name a book, which one doesn't. Um, uh, uh, McCarthyism, communism as well, uh, or communist sympathizers, um, because the main character was a communist early in his age, uh, early, in his early age. Um, it's kind of confessional too, um, which again makes me, remi reminds me of Mother Night. That's one of my big issues with it, that it makes me think of Mother Night and Howard uh, W. Howard W. Campbell. I despise that book. It is an abomination against God. <laughs> but that's the next book. Later. Um, uh, we were talking about Jailbird. Yeah, I think there's a kind of maturity. This is supposed to be in his uh, decline. Uh, Jailbird, and then Dead Eye Dick, uh, and then I think it's Galapagos after that, and then Bluebeard, which and a lot of people also really like Bluebeard, and then Hocus Pocus, another stinker, so to, so to speak. I remember reading, and, and then Time Quake. I, I think we can all agree that that novel should have never been published, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of these later novels I actually appreciate. Even Galapagos, you know, I have it in So It Goes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't offend me or annoy me um, like a lot of his earlier novels do. They really... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really like some of his later works, which are some of his least popular. Uh, I wonder. I wonder why that is. I wonder if people were just expecting too much. Maybe I was expecting too little, and that's why I came to appreciate these later ones because I took months off to finally come back to read these. And then, yeah, maybe again, Hocus Pocus, maybe even Bluebeard and Galapagos. You know, I just read boom, 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 boom. Uh, I read them too quickly I needed some more space to properly enjoy them I don't know but um, yeah something about some of his later work I think he just becomes a better writer uh, and Jailbird is one of those novels I think it tackles a lot of issues fairly well um, and is sharp in its criticisms and is dare I say funny <laughs> although it does have its issues uh, I think it perhaps coming back and seeing, oh, this isn't actually all that terrible, just makes me think it's it's so great because I had just come off slapstick months before, but anyway, let's not uh, freak out. Uh, Mother Night is an abomination against God and all of mankind and all of God kind and against all animals and against all of uh, culture all throughout the world. Um, I hate this book. It's about a guy uh, who um, is on trial in Israel for uh, crimes against hu oh my God, crimes against humanity for uh, doing propaganda work for the Nazis. He stayed in Germany because he wanted to. Um, he just wanted to write, you know. He wanted to love his wife and write and. How can you blame a guy like that? But he's a mouthpiece for the Nazi mm, Nazi regime. Uh, doesn't really care one way or the other about the things that he's saying. Uh, you know, it doesn't bother him as long as he can do what he wants and be around the people that he loves. Uh, there's this whole thing going on to with a guy who he was working with. Now he wasn't just a Nazi mouthpiece. He was actually working. Uh, secretly for uh, the Allied power, uh, not the Allied powers, the Allies, um, by sending messages through different clicks and coughs and noises uh, that would send a secret code out um, that then could be deciphered and give information on the Nazis. Uh, and we're supposed to feel like there's some kind of complexity if you, you know, if, if you're doing, if you're working for the evil side, but you're actually, you know, a spy trying to help the, the good side or whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it's all a farce, though, uh, because he doesn't actually care about any of this. He has no interest uh, in the, uh, in what he does. Uh, he doesn't care about the harm he's doing. He has, oh yeah, yeah, okay. 
you know, I guess I'm spouting vile hatred, uh, which is contributing to the genocide of millions. But uh, never mind that. I, you know, I'm apolitical. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to think, oh, how should I feel about this guy? Uh, he's a Nazi, okay? He, he is a Nazi. Um, that's all there is to say about it. Even if he was, he didn't even, he just, okay, I guess, whatever. Uh, and then, you know, while he's on trial, uh, at the end, he... punishes himself for not crimes against humanity like he has contributed to, but crimes against himself. Fuck this book. It's stupid. It's dumb as hell. I hate it. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. This is an abomination. <laughs> I hate it. It's god awful. And I hate this book too. Uh, but it's not as bad as Mother Night. Not even close. Um... No. Well, I hate God bless you, Mr. Rosewater, but I gotta say, mm, no, I hate it too. Um, it's about this, like, philanthropist guy who uh, kind of runs out of luck. Uh, is wealthy. I've read this twice, and I'm kind of forgetting uh, some of the events that happen. There's a whole lot of weird things that go on in this novel with Mr. Rosewater. Um... I remember this novel does a lot of critiquing about capitalism, but this novel also feels very uh, kind of instructive and polemic, uh, which is really annoying. A lot of his works feel that way, uh, actually, especially Breakfast of Champions, by the way. Um, that was when I finally realized, this is why I'm hating his novels. And then I read Slapstick. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of criticisms of capitalism, uh, which are, and uh, I don't know. It, it just, my impression of this novel was like, uh, philanthropy is good, except, you know, uh, philanthropy is a money laundering scheme for the wealthy. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that was uh, part of the discourse when he was writing this at the time, so maybe I shouldn't criticize him too much, but it just... <clears throat> I had a lot of uh, the kind of Vonnegut humor that I don't appreciate. I didn't think it was very well written in the first place, uh, and it just kind of gave a pass to um, this kind of philanthropy. And, and, and it was really annoying, too. There's a lot of really strange things going on. There's this character who's uh, got a gay son and he's worried about that. And there's, a, I believe, a, another character who's worried about people finding out that he's a transvestite. Uh, and there's a lot of just like crass humor uh, that doesn't work for me. Uh, but you know, I, I don't really hate it nearly as much as Mother Night. Uh, so I'm gonna put it down to, I tell you, we are here on Earth to fart around. Uh, okay, Player Piano, his very first novel. Uh, God, I'm kind of forgetting. I know it's this guy who's the son of who was the second most important man who was in charge of, like, all kinds of industry uh, around the world, a uh, around America, agricultural and, and everything else. Um and he got an office job, and there's a class divide uh, in, uh, there's a river, and the, the pores go on one side, uh, and I think they don't receive an education or, or something, I can't really remember, uh, but he ends up uh, joining sides with this uh, uh, sort of terrorist organization that wants to restructure society to be more uh, have more equity uh, and equality and, and this kind of thing uh, yeah it definitely reads like a, a first attempt at a novel um, it's kind of messy not terribly funny but not really offensive it's perfectly okay 
<laughs> um, yeah, nothing, nothing much to say about it. I don't remember too much about it, to be honest. I just remember uh, the main character's wife is concerned about she desperately doesn't want to be uh, one of the poors, and she's pushing her husband, who's expected to succeed and basically take the place of his father, um, or achieve the rank that his father had. Um, but he doesn't really want to do that. He feels like an outcast, even though he's <laughs> the cream of the crop, essentially. And he's got nepotism backing him and all that. Um, Solder has five. Uh, most people's favorite for me, I think it's second. Billy Pilgrim and his story. I really like uh, the way that it transitions in time. There's a lot of things I don't like. Uh, I think the way the... Yeah, the way Billy Pilgrim interacts with the woman he's in in the Trophimagorian Zoo. Uh, I don't really like that. There's some humor in here that I don't really like, but um, I think it's pretty mature because he's being very serious. You know, it's about his experience uh, in Dresden when it was bombed uh, and him sort of trying to work through that through fiction. Um, and I think he does a very good job. I think it's uh, got some really interesting concepts. Uh, if I remember correctly, there is one really cool idea uh, about like a bomb that doesn't destroy anything but rebuilds. Uh, reconstructs buildings that have you know, been destroyed. Uh, very interesting to think about. What if we had <laughs> some kind of technology that could do that? Maybe I'm just remembering a conversation I had with a co-worker when we were talking about this. and I don't remember. I think that's in there. <laughs> I remember talking about it when talking about Slaughterhouse 5 with my co-worker, but... Uh, of forgetting anyway it's a classic i don't think i need to say too much it's pretty much everyone's favorite but yeah i like the back and forth in time i think he does it well here uh and although there are some things i don't like about it very clear monicatisms um you know so it goes let's move on with life the sirens of titan uh this novel i definitely hate i uh to be honest i don't remember too much of it but there's a Trophimagorian. Looks a little bit different than the hand plunger thing in Slaughterhouse Five. Uh, looks like an orange. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember drawing a picture of it for a uh, for a uh, thumbnail. But uh, there's some wealthy guy. And he's got a rocket, and I think he takes his dog. Uh, and the Sirens of Titan is kind of like a message from the Trophimagorian uh, who was on a mission to kind of navigate through Milky Way, uh, send a message and, and whatever, uh, spy on stuff. And there, this novel, I remember, is about free will, how everything was kind of uh, leading up to uh, coming to the Trophimagorian and, and, you know, interacting there. I, I'm kind of forgetting a lot of what happens. I just remember that the message that is on uh, Titan, the, the moon, um, where the Trophimagorian is, is like an anti-joke, very anticlimactic joke. And that just, I know this is a lot of people's favorites as well, or uh, a fan favorite for many people, but I just, that, just makes me so angry and I just didn't find any of the it like I don't even know what he was I remember not knowing what he's talking about and I really don't know now because I don't remember the novel but <laughs> it just I remember feeling angry that none of it makes any sense I mean I understood what was happening but I didn't understand why anybody would write this um, and then to top it off the anticlimactic joke absolutely did not work for me. Um, completely unfunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
completely stupid, undeserved. I don't even remember what the message was. I don't care to remember. Uh, I don't like the novel uh, at all in any way. I hate it. Um, but I don't hate it nearly as much. I should have made a separate thing for Mother Night. I genuinely despise that novel. Um, and I don't understand how anybody could like it. Now, Sirens of Titan, I, I can get it. I, but, you know, it's the kind of thing where his sense of humor and his satire and, and the w his writing style, it just doesn't make sense. It feels like it's baseless and I, I don't know what it's grounded on. <laughs> uh, another novel I really hate. Uh, is slapstick. This has like a, a brother and a sister. They're very closely connected. One's left brain minded and the other one is right brain minded, whatever that's supposed to mean. One's more creative and one's more logical or something. They work really well together. Uh, I don't remember this one too much. I really hated it though. Uh, I remember um, there's this naming system. Uh, there's like I believe this one has a presidential campaign, or is it in Breakfast of Champions? I believe this one has a presidential campaign, and uh, I can't remember what it what the phrase is. It just was on the the uh, the tip of my tongue. But there's a presidential campaign, uh, and there's this naming system so that everybody's kind of family. Uh, because there's a lot of troubles in the world. Uh, and I also remember that the Chinese are shrinking. So much so that by the end of the novel, uh, people can breathe them in and get incredibly sick. Uh, and are sort of seen as a plague. Uh, that obviously did not age well. <laughs> and never would have been funny then to me either. Um in the 70s uh, yeah it just made me angry and it was stupid and it wasn't funny and again another I don't understand where his sense of humor comes from I don't understand what he's <laughs> I know what he's saying I can you know all these novels I can kind of tell what he's poking fun at I just don't understand how, like, what connection am I supposed to have to it when this is not even, <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, this should honestly have its own uh, separate category as well. Uh, Slapstick and Mother Night might actually belong together, but Time Quake, uh, definitely excrement hit the air conditioner big time. Mmm. Yeah. Um, it's mostly, it, it doesn't make me angry. It doesn't annoy me, like Breakfast of Champions or God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater, which also kind of, it, no, God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater just kind of makes me angry. Slapstick, The Sirens of Titan, and Mother Night make me angry for different reasons, but they make me, especially Mother Night. Uh, Time Quake is just not a good novel. Uh, and is mostly disappointing because I had hit a, hit a wave of five novels. As you can see, Jailbird, Dead Eye Dick, Bluebeard, Hocus Pocus, uh, Galapagos, all up at the top. Uh, and honestly, I could make the case for Galapagos being up here. Mm, and in fact... Oh, well. <laughs> Galapagos is going to go in the second one. Uh, Maybe also hindered by the fact that I was reading too many in quick succession. Uh, but it's kind of a distant one, close to so it goes. Cat's Cradle, <sighs> disappointing. Player Piano, very middling. Uh, and then the other ones at the bottom, annoying. Except Time Quake. Uh, maybe I would be annoyed, but it's just kind of sad to read. It's like, it feels very autobiographical about some very heavy topics. It's definitely about free will. Uh, has Kilgore Trout who's died in 2001, but the time quake is like a an event where people are sent back in time to relive every moment, and so they're sent back to 1991. But there's all the, it's so rambly. There's all these asides, and then coming back pages later, 
uh, a change in chapter doesn't really mean a change in content or a change in idea. It's just kind of a continuation, which is maybe an interesting um, way to play around with the very concept of what a novel is. But the entire construction of this, I was, uh, I saw that Vonnegut was struggling. I remember in the autobiography, he really felt like he had nothing else to say. Uh, and it shows. And I really wish this novel was never published. I don't hate it. I mean, I don't like it at all. But it's mostly just kind of sad to read. Not only, I guess, because of the content of talking about loved ones dying, uh, last words, and, and, and things like this, but like it's just like... I genuinely don't know what was going on. <laughs> like, who, who who allowed this? Uh, I mean, if this is what he presented, he should have just been told, maybe not. Maybe just make the time quake concept a short story and sell that. You know what I mean? Or a very short novella or something uh, about Kilgore Trout. Uh, make the sad, depressing things. Although, you know, to be honest, uh, A Man Without a Country came out... A like seven years later, uh, much more coherent, although deeply cynical and depressing to read in its own way. He's a very angry, rambly, bitter man in that one. In this one, uh, yeah, I don't hate it. It's just, it's, it's a bad novel. <laughs> but uh, that's how I rank Kurt Vonnegut's novels. A bit surprising I have so many. Uh, I would say these top three solid B novels in the grand scheme of things for me. Uh, these mm, uh, second tier ones uh, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, maybe C kind of novels. Uh, so it goes like C minus. <laughs> and then these other ones are just like F, all F. Uh, and uh, Mother Night doesn't get any letter grade. Uh, Norse, no, 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 Mother Knight doesn't get any. Slapstick can get a double F. Uh, and Mother Knight can uh, go to hell. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye.